the phase out of nuclear power this year and coal by the end of 2038 or even 2030 is a quote unquote hot topic, but it's only a fraction of the whole picture. This video attempts to provide as close as you can get to a full picture of Germany's energy sources and electricity grid in about 10 minutes. We'll look at the capabilities of the current electric grid and power supply as well as the readiness to meet future electricity demand, in particular with regards to the electrification of the transport and building sector. I'm Kata. Welcome to this episode about Germany's energy supply and electric grid. On average, almost half of Germany's electricity supply comes from renewable energy sources. The term energy transition has its origin in the German word Energiewende. Legislative support for the Energiewende was passed in the late 2010 and included greenhouse gas reductions of 80 to 95 percent by 2050 relative to 1990 and a renewable energy target of 60 percent by 2050. The last nuclear power plant was shut down in 2022. All existing coal fire generation will be retired by 2038. An effective energy transition means close closing the gap between energy consumption and the supply of energy from renewable sources. This requires the serious commitment of actors across the entire society and the rapid implementation of ambitious technology and behavior-oriented policies. Germany has already made significant progress on its greenhouse gas emissions reduction target prior to the introduction of the program, achieving a 27% decrease between 1990 and 2014. However, the country would need to maintain an average greenhouse gas emissions abatement rate of 3.5% per year to reach its Energiewende goal, equal to the maximum historical value thus far. While electricity generation from solar varies throughout the year, the total renewables mix is much more stable and didn't drop below 10 terawatt hours per month in 2021. The good news is that the Energiewende is technically feasible. The challenge arises from people's resistance to change. I personally experienced this pattern early on in life and career. Change is driven by a will. As an engineer, I was used to finding technical solutions to problems. When I started working as a management consultant, however, I realized that this isn't quite how companies are run. Decisions are made by people and people tend to resist change by their very nature. Following the Bundestag resolution on the Climate Protection Act of mid-2021 with the more stringent goal of greenhouse gas neutrality in Germany in 2045, the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems ISE, has recalculated its study paths to a climate-neutral energy system. The institute works with four scenarios to analyze the effects of social trends on the achievement of the climate goals. Yes, that's right, scenarios accounting for human behavior from a technical institute. I'd like to emphasize that this is not a question of technical challenges. In all scenarios, the necessary transformation of the energy system is feasible from a technical and systemic point of view, but requires speed at all levels and from now on almost exclusively investments in target compatible technologies. The already considerable effort is all the greater when social behavior inhibits the transformation as, among other things, the continued operation of conventional technologies significantly increase the additional costs. Germany is reliable. That's what they say, right? And it's true, at least when it comes to electricity supply. Germany's power grid ranks among the most reliable in the world, despite the rapid expansion of renewables. The average yearly downtime per customer accounted to only 12 minutes in 2019. The US power grid is more challenging to handle compared to the German grid, since the median population density is lower. The gap in power supply from the nuclear and coal power phase-outs 
can currently not be met by renewables. A part of the equation is the reduction in energy exports. Will Germany turn from an exporting to an importing electricity country? On paper, it almost looks like coal and nuclear capacities have been easily substituted by an unprecedented boom in renewable energy sources. The capacity of solar PV, wind and biogas installations increased from 12 gigawatt in the year 2000 to 132 gigawatt in 2020. In 2018, Germany's Influential Energy Industry Association BDEW said that Germany would run into a shortfall in secured capacity by 2023 at the latest and that the country shouldn't rely on its neighbors to make up the difference. Three years later and a lot closer to the nuclear phase-out, BDEW head Kerstin Andrea says for secure energy supply we also need new gas-fired power plants and this is the only way to obtain the required controllable power. However, so far, fewer fossil capacities in the system and a share of almost 45% renewables in power consumption, the power system is still running smoothly. In the long term, domestic fossil fuel-based capacities will not be necessary if the integration of the European power grid and especially the interconnection and distribution of power from the vast offshore capacities in the North Sea are taken seriously, Andrea Sian of the Regulatory Assistance Project told Clean Energy Wire. And obviously, we also need further renewables expansion and the right market mechanisms so that flexible capacities are added, be said. The Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action says we are currently transforming our energy system to make it climate-friendly and sustainable. This level of restructuring takes time. Energy from conventional sources is helping us keep the lights on. Gas will continue to make a major contribution to Germany's energy supply in the coming decades. Only a small proportion of the natural gas used in Germany is produced in the country. Over 90% of the used gas is imported, mainly from Russia, Norway and the Netherlands. Natural gas reaches Germany via pipelines and is subsequently fed into the German long-distance gas grid and the downstream distribution grids. During a recent press conference, the VKU published its thesis paper Taxonomy for Gas makes a decisive contribution to climate protection. VKU General Manager Ingbert Liebing says anyone who thinks that the EU taxonomy is now about classifying natural gas as sustainable in the long term is wrong. The aim is to finance new power plants that will initially still be able to use natural gas, but will in the future be able to use hydrogen to generate electricity and heat. These power plants will play a crucial role in Germany for the transition to a climate neutral economy and will be a permanent part of a sustainable energy supply. H2 ready power plants sound great in theory, but they do not come without technical challenges. Challenges. We have a two-step approach. The first step is new future-proofed hydrogen-ready plants. The second step of our two-step approach is upgrading of existing power plants. Pipelines need to be resistant to hydrogen embrittlement. Hydrogen burns differently than methane. It actually blasts, which is good for efficiency, conversion of gas into heat, but it also brings safety and engineering challenges. Electronics, for example, must be explosion-proof. If you go for B1, the modification costs are less than 5% of the new plant when you would like to switch, or when the power station would like to switch to 25% hydrogen. We see the readiness level as an invest into a carbon-neutral future. And hydrogen is also about three times less energy dense than methane. That means that as the ratio of hydrogen rises, the volume of energy being delivered through the same pipelines decreases. 
The new administration in Germany brings new energy to climate protection. Climate Protection Minister Robert Habeck sees Germany facing a gigantic challenge on the path to achieving its climate goals. He wants to ignite a turbo. He presented the status and trajectory of climate protection measures and said the balance sheet for climate protection shows that we are starting with a drastic delay. The previous climate protection measures are inadequate in all sectors. It is forecastable that the climate targets for 2022 and 23 will not be met. But we are making every effort to make up for the lag. To do this, we have to triple the speed of our emission reduction and to significantly do more in less time. You may know that North America's grid is divided into four major grids, the large western and eastern region, as well as Quebec and Texas. In Germany, the maximum voltage transmission grid is owned by four transmission system operators, Tenet, 50 Hz, Imperion and Transnet BW, which are responsible for the operation, maintenance and development of their respective sections of the grid. It is their job to regulate the power supply, including balancing fluctuating power from renewables with more predictable and often more conventional generation. Emprion operates the grid in western Germany from Lower Saxony down to the border with Switzerland and Austria. Emprion also coordinates load and frequency between the four German control areas and is responsible for coordinating exchange programs for both the German transmission grid as a whole and for the northern part of the European UCTE interconnected system. Tenet operates 40% of the German grid running through the center of the country from north to south from Schleswig-Holstein through Lower Saxony and Hesse down to Bavaria in southern Germany. Tenet is owned by a Dutch company and responsible for managing the transmission grid in the Netherlands. Tenet also operates cross-border interconnectors between Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, Austria and the Czech Republic. In 2021, it launched a first direct current subsea cable link to Norway called Nordlink. Tenet is responsible for connecting offshore wind parks in the North Sea to the German grid. Transmission system operator 50 Hz operates the transmission grid in northern and eastern Germany and is responsible for connecting offshore wind farms in the Baltic Sea to the German grid. Transnet BW operates the transmission grid in Baden Württemberg. The Transnet BW grid is connected to the French, Austrian and Swiss networks. The distribution grid can suffer from bottlenecks just as much as the transmission grid. With 95% of the renewable power generators connected to the distribution grid, there is a clear need to update the infrastructure to cope with the increasingly bidirectional flow of power. But dealing with prosumers, meaning households and soon more and more electric vehicles that not only consume power from the grid, but also feed electricity into it from the rooftop solar PV panels require the installation of new smart technology. This involves investment in smart meters or local distribution substations, more accurate weather forecasting equipment that inform the grid management and a range of new software, all to make the grid more transparent and controllable from the distance. The lower the voltage level, the less information and communication technology has been installed, simply because it wasn't necessary before prosumers entered the market. In 2015, the federal parliament passed a law on the digitalization of the Energiewende, which stipulates the installation of smart meters. However, the rollout of new technology has been slowed down by delays in technology development and concerns about data security. Germans are a lot more worried about their data security compared to Americans anyway. There are over 800 distribution grid operators, some of which belong to large conglomerates like Aeon, while others are small regional utilities. 
They all have to acquire the technology and knowledge and plan the installation of hundreds of thousands of smart meters. It is not possible to store large amounts of electricity. So hour by hour, minute by minute, the national grid performs an elaborate balancing act between supply and demand. Surpluses or deficits on the network manifest themselves as shifts in the main frequency. The grid is required to stay within 1% of 50 Hz, so it responds to fluctuations in demand by switching in and out of supply as needed. Can a large industrialized society like Germany run securely and smoothly on a power system largely fed by these intermittent renewable energy sources? In the end, the question is not whether it can, but how. By 2045, Germany wants to be climate neutral, reaching emission reductions of 65% by 2030 and 88% by 2040. The government's plan is to achieve this chiefly by electrifying all sectors from transport through heating to industry as much as possible with green power. Having decided against the use of nuclear power and due to the lack of naturally available hydropower, intermittent generation from solar plants and wind turbines is the technology of choice and its share in rising power consumption will have to exceed 65 by 2030. The energy ministry is confident that even in the difficult years after the nuclear phase-out, the process will not endanger the power supply of companies and households. Is Germany ready for its own energy vendor? Overall, I'm confident about Germany's capabilities to plan, manage and expand energy supply and distribution to meet current and future electricity demand. I think we should acknowledge the great achievement of half of the energy from renewables at this point. At the same time, we need to keep working hard to achieve future climate protection goals. Of course, there is controversy ongoing about how to fill the gap from nuclear and coal phase out in the short and mid term. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can fill this gap without additional gas power, for a while at least. But there is wide agreement about Germany becoming climate neutral by 2045. And I see constructive discussions about the means to get to that end as a good sign of living a healthy democracy. Thank you for watching and see you next time.